Our reading today is Mark 2, 23 to 28, and our preacher is one of our local preachers based at Harby Lane. Me, which means I've got to do it live. Um, and what I've been doing with our preachers up to now have been recorded is they've got a, a name strap which I've done in um, editing software and to do that live is quite tricky and yes you're right I am somewhat smug about the fact um, I've done that but actually church isn't as we said before about music as such or not just a noise it about flashy techy graphics it's so much more than that one sabbath he was going through the cornfields and as they made their way his made their way his disciples began to pluck heads of grain the pharisees said to him look why are they doing what is not lawful on the sabbath and he said to them have you never read what david did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food he entered the house of God, when Abiphar was high priest, and ate the bread of, bread of presence, which was not long for, for any but the priest to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was not was made for humankind, and not for humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. So, this week, I need to talk about what is church and somehow include reference to Christian aid all in five minutes. Good game, good game. I wanted to start and centre my thinking on what church isn't rather than what it is. I have four Four, find a place from four, four, four headlines, a bit more Python esque, four headlines to consider beyond the two we've already thought about. The church is more than flash tech and more than music, linked to music, but more than. So, four more things to think about. And the first is so obvious, I nearly missed it. My wife had to point it out to me. As Jesus and his disciples walk along, they are outside. Jesus does almost all of his ministry outside, so church is not a building. As, and if we didn't know that before, we do now. But church is also not a number of other things. The Sabbath was a good idea, but the rules based around it had, over time, become more and more burdensome. When Jesus answers the Pharisees, his point very roughly is centre your thoughts on me, not man-made rules. Which brings us very neatly to church is not a religion. And that's because Christianity isn't a religion. Oh yes it is. Oh no it isn't. Okay, <coughs> so it is in that it is worship of a deity but it isn't as arguably some other faiths are the following is a, a set of rules to earn like brownie points to heaven it's a crude way to put it rather it's about a relationship with god and doing what he wants because we desire to do that as part of the relationship that's the theory. Now, the problem is that we humans are very good at making rules up where arguably there aren't any, and we do this all the time. We make up rules, usually unwritten, and we worship them. Where we sit, what type of coffee we have, how the band plays, what... Indeed, how we gather together can become more important than why we gather together. And so we get to church is not a social club. The church isn't a social club. Okay, it is, again, fellowship helps, but our primary objective uh, is that it isn't a social club, and if it becomes so, we've missed the point. 
You are probably aware of an old illustration about a lifeboat station that over time became a social club and ended up not saving lives. If we do, if what we do socially gets in the way of what we do spiritually, we have a problem. And so from social club to social services. Church is not social services. By this I mean it's not about caring for others. Oh yes it is. Okay it is. In fact I don't really have a leg to stand on with this one but it may not be as obvious as you first thought. The early Christian church had made the connection between gathering and giving very early on. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. Words from Luke based on Leviticus that lead up to the story of the Good Samaritan. If you read Lark Rise to Candleford, you will see the Church of England working amongst the poor before anyone had ever thought of social services. The Methodist Church and others have a proud history of doing the same thing, especially in traditional working class areas during the Industrial Revolution. So why have I said that church is not a form of social services when it blatantly is? Because it makes a good headline that makes you think. The question really is, am I doing this because it, because it is part of my love relationship with God or because I've made up a rule or somebody else has made up a rule which I feel I have to obey? So, to be fair, perhaps it should be churches more than social services. So all this isn't about how we respond to God. Sorry, all this is about how we respond to God. Get it right. All this is about how we respond, respond to God. Now, a slight aside, my church, Harry Lane Church, doesn't pass a bag round for money as part of the service. Now, I think personally in the modern world this is probably right, at least for us. But the words we used to use for that part of the service were the free will offering. And that is the point. Our response to his love, be it through music or tech, or in this case serving those in need, is our offering. It's our free will offering. We don't have to do it. We choose to do it. Sometimes we make that offering financially. So this is Christian Aid Week. And if you're someone watching this who normally doesn't attend church, I can imagine you may think, oh, here we go, I knew it would come to money in the end, the church always wants money. Hear me out. It isn't about, the, well, it sort of is, but it isn't actually primarily about the money. It's about offering and offering with a willing heart. But most of all, it's not about duty or rules. It's about care and it's about love. For Christians, it should first and foremost be about a loving relationship with God and then because of that a loving relationship with others perhaps even those who don't love or maybe even like us. I love God because he first loved me. His dying crimson on the tree says that he first loved me. But he loves so many others Liberal theology says we may be surprised who we find in heaven. God loves all. So as a church without wall without sorry, as a church without walls, without really that many rules, can we do likewise? Can we love all? And can we do that as part of our offering, not just out of obedience, but out of our responsive love for him who first loved us.